Hello out there, all you crazy brony and Pegasus sisters. I am Silver Quill, welcoming you to the MBS show, where it's time to giddy up and talk about an episode. But first, we must make introductions. With me today, our podcaster and planeswalker extraordinaire, Norman Sanzo. Everybody supersonic racing, try to keep your feet right on the ground. Oh my. I'm having Sonic Freeriders flashbacks. No, no, that's Sonic R. <laughs> Even worse. And apparently someone who knows more about Sonic games than I, our local anime mascot, Sapphire Heart Song. Can you feel the sunshine? Does it brighten up your day? No. And it's time for us to giddy up as we talk about the cart before the ponies. <laughs> Can I do arcade classic songs like Daytona or something like that? Or maybe Need for Speed. Yeah, everybody loves Need for Speed, right? Oh, or we could really scare people and start singing the Rainbow Road from uh, Mario Kart. <laughs> How do you sing the Rainbow Road? Very carefully. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, yeah. But I suppose we should start with a quick summation, mm -hmm. eh, which is actually pretty easy in this episode. The Applewood Derby is being hosted for all the Phillies and Cheerleys class. But the Key Mark Crusaders sisters, who are much more bound by tradition and past grudges, take over the reins and turn the race into something it's not meant to be. And thus the Crusaders are stuck in an impossible situation, how to honor their sisters, but also pursue what they want to do in this derby. And as we are going with first impressions, and since someone has voiced her feelings quite strongly, Sefi, do go oh on. Oh boy, me, oh boy. How do I feel about this episode? It has so much wasted potential. You could have made all the references. Mario Kart, Speed Racer, Sonic, and All-Star Racing. Anything other than just this plain old boring episode with the predictable plot. But, Sefi... It's painful. Daniel Ingram did took inspiration from Mario Kart. Barely any inspiration from Mario Kart, Norman. Barely. I did not see any flying turtle shells. Where was Tank? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> It could have been so much more than what it did, but no, just instead we got this. You know what? This episode may have well have crashed and burned. That's how I feel. All right, I'm then. Dead. Oh, here that she's done. She's walking out. Oh, she's walking out the door. Oh, no. I'm done. I'm done with this. This is th this has been Safi's final episode with the NBS show. We're sorry no, to see you I go. Want to come back. Oh, oh, okay. You're not that done, done. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Whew. Crisis averted. Yay. Norman, try not to scare us. All right. Um, I'm the opposite. <laughs> I like this episode. I think this episode is a fun one. It's slice of lifey, and well, we still potential is there, but you know what? That's not the real message. Like the message is how grown-ups should pay more attention to kids and what they want because in this scenario, it's the kids' thing. You shouldn't really take over and make it your own. And yeah, I do like this one a lot. Hearing some of the musics done in this one, it does remind me a bit of Mario Kart. So yeah, it feels really nice. Oh yeah, also I forgot to mention, it's also like a Toddlers and Tiara episode except with carts and ponies. What? What is Toddlers and Tiaras? Basically a show dedicated to adults trying to get their children to live through their beauty pageant dreams or some crap like that. Okay. Did you waste your time and energy watching something like that? No, God no. You think I would actually watch that crap? No. No, I've heard of it though. I've seen all the TLC commercials for it back in its day. Why would you watch TLC? Uh, that channel is not about the learning anymore. And it was never about tender loving care. Yeah. No, no, like, commercials would pop up around, like, other TV stations. It's like that. That's some brass. We're going to advertise ourselves on a rival channel. They won't put us at any awkward time slots. Yeah, indeed. Pretty much. If you were to watch reviews, you could just go to Silver Quill's YouTube page or Sapphire's YouTube page. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm also... Actually, no, I'm not even going to do any future self-promoting until it's done. Uh, self-promotion. But yeah, I think that's about it for my first impressions. Really like it. Silver, what about you? 
Well, we've had one person who seems to very much dislike this episode, one who enjoyed it. I guess I'm on the middle road. I liked parts of it. I liked ideas within it. I liked the Crusaders' goals. I liked the song. I liked how everyone jumped on the bandwagon of cheerleader Jubilee. <laughs> yeah. Or, I've seen better designs. Actually, you know, it's, it's cheerily, so it's a cheerleader. Unfortunately, the big sisters brought this episode down for me. Once you, they start going for everything you expect them to do, and they do everything you expect them to do, that's part of the fun of even when you know the end result ahead of time. Because My Little Pony is not usually one for big twists and turns. It's the journey that's the fun part. And the way they were so predictable in every step, it just took some of the fun away from the journey. I was like, ah, I feel like Apple Bloom in the back of that old-timey cart. Mm. That said, Derby Racers, the song, is a lot of fun. So it comes out middle of the road for me. So we've got uh, low, medium, and high opinions of the episode. Yep, yep. So with that said, we have done a, a quick summarization. We've done first impressions. It's time to shift it to overdrive and hit the spoiler zone. Halfway to the spoiler zone. So you could say that we're shifting into turbo? <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, I'll be going down the highway to hell. <laughs> Mostly I'm just thinking of, uh, I want to remember Car Ranger. <laughs> yeah. Car Ranger. Power Ranger Turbo. Car, car, uh, what became Turbo for the Power Rangers here in America was a much funnier series in Japan. Yeah. That, actually, Ew. that actually saved Super Sentai from cancellation. Really? Oh, yes. Well, Power Rangers Turbo nearly ended po uh, Power Rangers. Car Ranger saved Super Sentai and allowed it to continue onward, culminating in a recent 200th 2000th episode. Huh. All right. Then. I would have thought that the funny bits were kind of a turnoff for Japan. Oh, no. Oh, you, Japan has a marvelous sense of humor uh, in their entertainment. It is just sheer bizarrity. Oh, yeah. I know that. But, oh, yes. Huh? After all, we have the great and powerful works of things like One Punch Man and Space Dandy. And JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh, believe me. So, of course, Japan has marvelous senses of humor something. I don't know. Well, oh, can't it, speak. It, it gets weirder. I promise. It gets weirder. Yep. But anywho, spoilers ahead. Yes, we are going to spoilers. In fact, we're going to school. Oh, no. Or you could go watch Space Dandy instead. No, listen no. to us. Okay. No, we're going to... Fine. We're gonna watch a character who has far smaller breasts than the uh than the wait staff in Space Dandy. In, in fact In fact I think that's rather inappropriate words to talk about a school teacher like Shira Lee. Norman, how could you? What did I do? What? <laughs> yes, and Miss Shira Lee is giving her class a physics test. I have to say that when when Shira Lee says physics lesson, I was with the class like uh, Shirley, don't you think that this is a bit too extreme and advanced for these kids? Like, yo, they're still in, what, grade, school? <laughs> what? I get Who knows the, what this universe... I get the sense that she wanted to be a more advanced teacher <laughs> yeah. and kind of had to work her way back. Uh, yeah. But I do like the setup. It's it's like a very cruel joke. Oh, speaking of cruel jokes, when she spun that blackboard, who was waiting for Rainbow Dash to be on the other side? <laughs> Uh, no, like, I do get the reference, but not yet. <laughs> not yet. But thankfully, uh, all of this is in anticipation of the Applewood Derby, where they are going to get to do what every C Cub Scout and Boy Scout hoped they could do, because we got shortchanged. Really? Oh, I, I took part in Pinewood, a uh, Pinewood Derby. I lost in everything, because ultimately my father and I, we really didn't care. <laughs> well, on but, sorry, go then ahead. why did you join? It... It's a Cub Scout thing. You kind of have to go along. Maybe that's... Oh, you're in Cub Scouts? Yes. Nice. I was a Cub Scout. I, I had to eat my companions for survival. <laughs> but, you know, survival of the fittest. But, uh, put, put simply, the Pinewood Derby, for those who might not know, is basically that each kid is given a block of wood which, with, with which to whittle down into a car. I mean, there's the basic shape. And wheels. They're sort of, they sell pre-made kits. But then it's on the, it's then it's on the kids and more likely their fathers to, uh, sand it down, streamline it, adjust the shape, make it more. 
and you have to fit within a certain set of rules. Basically, this is both equal parts a craft test and to see how well you can follow rules. If I'm not mistaken, that the, what was it, Pinewood Derby, there's a two categories, one which, one is children and one is adult and professional, something like that? I have never seen a professional Pinewood Derby. I, given competition that within, uh, professional leagues, I have a hard time imagining Grobman going, go faster, faster, as this cart goes down a wooden ramp. I'm just like, really? Really? I watch, I watch a cartoon about pastel horses, and even I'm having trouble picturing this one. Honestly, I'm at that point where I'd rather watch a NASCAR race. Oh, tur- turn, turn, turn left. They're turning left. They're turning left again! Do, 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 They're Daytona. making left turn! <laughs> We are very open-minded on this show. Yes. Yes. But I'm at this point where I'd rather just watch a NASCAR and Ember broken. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. You have a dragon princess in your room? Huzzah! Oh, wow. No, I have a puppy. Even better. Yay. <laughs> My apologies to Ember fans, but puppy, puppy Trump's dragon. Oh, true that. But anywho... <laughs> But things take a turn for the ponies as they get to race actual cars. This is where my inner child resents this show terribly. I watched the little blind box on four wheels go down a ramp. These ponies get to race eat one another. <laughs> wait, 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 how does more or less? How does actual Pinewood Derby race? What's the rule and regulation? What does it do? Well, let's see here. It's been a while, but you're allowed to put some weight on a car, but not a weight exceeding a certain amount. They have a ramp set up. It's a very gradual slope that, that becomes steeper. So a car is going to start off rolling slowly, but then they pick up speed. Uh, finish line at the bottom and a sort of, uh, gate that folds down. So all the cars lean up against the gate and then once it drops, they start rolling. And it's just a question of who, who reaches the bottom first. I, I still have my Pinewood Derby, which is basically we just spray painted it blue and added wheels and decals. <laughs> but yeah, it's something my dad and I did together. So. No. So adorable. Nuts to the victory, but I was with my pa. Yay. But, but these it's kids. It's okay. Spending time with your dad is all that matters, right, Silver? I think so. E. But then, these ponies get to race full-fledged carts. I mean, one, the logistics of making the carts themselves. I, Wow, I thought physics was above their grade. Apparently, uh, Equestria just needs labor forces really quick. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Snails is all like, I thought we were going to have to learn something. I don't get to be charmingly stupid for another few episodes. <laughs> uh, well, at the same time, can you blame the poor kid? For for having to learn, I, stuff? I think he would get eaten alive when it came to physics, Silver. So I wouldn't blame him too much. But having to learn anything, anything. <laughs> I went to school and I learned things. You kids have to learn at least something. In this case, you're going to learn the harsh, bitter reality. People want to live vicariously through you. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I've definitely experienced that as of late. And- Throughout the years, people want to be me. Hmm. Anywho, the Pinewood Derby, or no, sorry, the Applewood Derby is, has three categories. Most traditional, most stylized, and fastest for winning the race. And how convenient the Crusaders want to win each of the awards. Well. Individually. Yep. That is very convenient. At the same time, too, I do like how they presented the quote-unquote conflict for this one, which is totally dropped in a few seconds, where, oh, there's tradition, there's style, and there's speed. Obviously, Scooter is going to go for speed, right? But what a twist! She wants most stylized. Okay, Apple Bloom would want the most traditional, because she's an Apple, right? Surprise! She's a speed demon. (laughs) My love! Sometimes I wonder if Granny is the little old lady from Pasadena. <laughs> oh, there you go. And so we would think that maybe, just maybe, Sweetie Belle would want to compete for a more stylized, but no. She wants no, I say to you. She's super traditional. And I like this aspect. I like that Crusaders are not giving in to, uh, you know, they're not 
pre-scripted or, or stereotypical. We, they're like, you know, we do this stuff all the time. Let's diversify. Yeah, this is one part of the episode that I really like. And you know what? Them asking their elder, quote unquote, elder sister, is enjoyable to see. But I can already predict the conflict that's going on. And yes, Silver, I do agree with you here, where the pre- the predictable storyline is kind of a turn off. As is yeah. a look back at the pony's histories. Mm-hmm. Safi, do you have anything you would you, you wish to add? This all could have been solved if they traded sisters. I do agree with that, but that aspect could have been introduced later on. I'll point it out when we reach there. When we reach there, but first we gotta get there. And mm-hmm. we get there fast, like Rainbow Dash in a setting competition. She's all like, cool runnings! <laughs> yeah, man! Was a factually inaccurate movie, but it's still good, oh, man. Yeah. We're not we're not coming back to the Olympics as equals. We're going retiring to sell beer. Yeah, man. Is this a sports comedy movie that I have yet to see? You have not seen Cool Running. Comedy is a loose term. Yeah, it's like I a, don't know. It's like a sports it's, movie, like one of those sports movie where the hero in the end loses, but everybody do the slow clap. Yes. Ew, sports movie. Now that's the type of movie genre I will not touch. But it's a fun movie. What if I said it was? A, what if I said it was a Disney movie? I don't care. What do I say if there's John Candy inside? I don't care. I think the only you sports monster. movie I ever really liked was Blades of Glory. But we'll get to that when MLP decides to touch upon ice skating someday. I don't know. Well, just so you know, every movie Stranger with Candy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. All right. But basically, Rainbow wants to relive her glory day of being the fastest uh, slutter in Cloudsdale. Because, of course, she's always about the speed. Meanwhile, Applejack. Hmm, I wonder what drives Applejack, pun intended. <laughs> Tradition. You're sure is shooting. Yeehaw. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> The apples have done the same thing over and over, so therefore Apple Bloom will do the same thing. Let's get to the true, the truly wonderful flashback. Yeah. Rarity. <laughs> Poor Rarity. Rarity. Oh, God, I feel for Rarity. Oh, no, I don't. I relish in this. Yes, I'm taking far too much pleasure in her pain to be healthy. <laughs> but then it- I mean, I I understand how it was funny. I admit I was laughing at this, but at the same time, it's like, oh, God, poor Rarity. I know how you feel, girl. I've been set up by insuperior people so many times in my life. It's not even funny. Insuperior? I don't know. I'm making up words as I go along or some crap. I don't know. Were, were they- People who aren't fit to be superior, but actually are in some way that I cannot understand through my simpleton mind. It sounds more like they were coated in chicken broth. In superior. <laughs> the word Seppi was looking for is inferior. Yeah, that. I like the in- Why the hell did I... Uh, never mind, I cannot speak words. I can't speak the English. I like the soup idea better, I'm just saying. Maybe it, I'll cook you up some. <laughs> but that, but that means that Rarity is all hot to trot to live out her fantasy of being first place. Well, do we want to mention who beat her all those years ago? Oh, it it, it is a glorious sight. All hail the cross-eyed muffin bear. All hail the cross-eyed muffin bear. But more than no. that, more than that, her cart. It looks like something you'd make in scrap mechanic. <laughs> But <laughs> it looks... Well, okay, here's the thing. She did it herself, and she's proud of it, and everybody else is too. But I do not agree in the most creative aspect. <laughs> I don't know, man. When you can make something like that work and defy all tradition... Right, not right. <laughs> and meanwhile, so, meanwhile, there's some Pegasus in that flashback is a jerk, because he puts all these rain clouds over a filly and starts <laughs> letting them unload. <laughs> I can see the rage burning in rarity. And yeah, you know what? Her taking over the project. Yeah, we, we know her motivations. <laughs> Wait, now I'm, now I'm visioning that that Pegasus was like a drama teacher. So it's like, okay, rarity, now scream to the heavens. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Feed me your rage. No. I refuse. 
Go well, away. Well, maybe we can get your rage going as we get into the actual cart building. Mm-hmm. Which I think this is where the sister swap would come up rather quickly and be a lot more fun to see. Yeah. See, see I'm with Safi on this one. Yep, and this is the part where I'm going to mention that after working for a few scenes, this is where they realize that, hey, instead of working with our own sisters, why don't we swap? Because apparently uh, Rainbow Dash is all about the speed. So Apple Moon could just go with Rainbow Dash and so on. And the story here would be working with another person and how awkward it feels to just get into that rhythm and they can expand on their relationship but no 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 eh, to be honest it would be a boring episode if there was no conflict so eh, i sort of take back my statement on um you know what if they swap sisters uh, well then we wouldn't be discussing uh, this episode no now, no, no. Would we? You, you can take it back i'm still going to stick with it because the conflict would be them trying to work with a new person like Think about it. Hey, Rainbow Dash and Apple Bloom, what do they have in common? Like, now it's something um, new to discover and so on with the rest of the ponies. Yeah, Apple Bloom is more used to working with Applejack. They have sort of unspoken communication. Each one knows what to do just based on practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then Rainbow, who's not good at conveying her thoughts, emotions, or plans, they're going to trip over each other a lot. So... so- Sappy, I, I, under, I understand you think there might not be conflict. I think there would have been more conflict if they'd done a sister swap. Either way, anything would be much more interesting than what we've got here. Ooh, the bitterness. I got to point something out. I got to point something out. Like, remember way back when in season one, uh, in, sorry, season two, where I think this is your favorite episode, Silver, uh, the sisterhood oh, yes. social. Remember oh, yes. how Sweetie Belle wanted Applejack to be her bigger sister and run the race with her? Indeed, but they never did. Yeah, but this could be that. Like, if Sweetie Belle wants to do tradition, Applejack is all about the tradition. Yeah, so maybe that's the missed opportunity in this. Yeah. In this to, to enhance the relationship each sister has by swapping things up a little. Yep. That'll be cool. But nah, we have to stick to the plan. <laughs> <laughs> stick to the plan and stay on target. Stay Stay on target. target. (laughs) Now, to be fair, the the carts they create are impressive. Oh, true that. Especially Derpy's cart. Have you seen her cart? Woohoo! But I, I so wanted Scootaloo to own her chickenness. (laughs) Everybody else was groaning like when this episode came out. Like. I remember distinct people going, oh my god, the joke is old, get off the stage. Oh, steal, like. oh you let, you, you get over it, you, you let the tradition flow. <laughs> I did! I wanted it to flow. I secretly kept my mouth shut because I didn't want to get yelled at for liking the chicken joke. Alright, who would yell at you? I'll go bust them in the face. <sighs> okay. I'll I'll just stand here behind you and let you take care of all these other people that are basically anyone but us. <laughs> and oh. maybe Norman. Oh. Norman, what do you think of the chicken joke? It was eh on it, like, could have... Well, it was funny, but, like, eh, I was 50-50, not really in, eh, not really against, you know, it's like, eh. So then you're safe from Sasha. So you thought it was poultry humor? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I, I, thought... I had to keep my mouth shut, though. I didn't want to feel like I was going to get bullied or something because, you know. <laughs> You're not in high school anymore. I don't care. It's the internet. You're one of the reviewers that people go to. Why are you afraid? I'm still, I'm still a soft and mushy being who can barely... Hold a punch, even though she has a lot of bark. I don't know. I look you, with the you, chicken joke. You just got to be plucky about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you got you got a you got a crow like there's no tomorrow. Don't, just don't chicken out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just gotta keep going. I'm labeling you as my new white knight, Silver. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, you're gonna get a white knight in sour armor. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. Let's continue on. Let's continue on. So basically we go through a montage of them building their various cards. And let, let's be fair is fair. 
they do good jobs. Mm-hmm. You can't fault the sisters on their on their creativity. Yep, yep. Oh yeah. Well, the Crusaders get together and they compare notes. Like, ah, I'm not having fun, but they're older. They must know better than us. Let's get together. Yeah, this is the part where I kind of am, you know, this is a trope where older person knows better than younger person, yet younger person wants something else to be done, but nah, they're not listening and so on. Hey, that's my life in a nutshell. (laughs) Uh, But honestly, with this one, they did try and talk to the elder sisters saying that, uh, I want to do this, but no, you should do what I want because this is the thing that we want. Yes, right? Okay, let's do it. And we'll see how well that goes. Yep. But now it is time for racers to take their mark. And let's, you know, here's here's a poll for y'all. All right. What's your favorite cart? Uh, in all of them? Out of all of them. All right. Um, I would have to say, um, honestly, I like Diamond Tiara's cart. There you go, Diamond Tiara and Reginald, all set at the start line. I don't remember any of the cart designs other than the main three. I was that disinterested in this episode, so I'm kind of stuck between Rarity and Rainbow Dash, because in real life I am slightly a bit of a speed demon, so, but I can't help but love design. And we know that Safi truly resents this episode because she hasn't pulled up the gallery on uh, the MLP wiki. Yep. No, no I have not. Really now, well then you're going to you're going to flounder in the next bit. But okay, for me, I I am drawn to rarities because it it is elegant, sweeping, but it also has moving parts. Yeah, and also means, she can block like that's that's just cheating. Well, that's cheating. That's also trolling. <laughs> so of course, so of course, I'm all for it. <laughs> they see me trolling, the hating. But honestly, I do like Derpy's cart too. Derpy's cart is really simple. <laughs> And once again, Rarity's probably eyeing it like, you won't get me this time. (laughs) Ah, so true. Ah, but, but here's the, here are the two little nuggets that are, I think worth discussing. One, we see a a lanky pony with a mustache who may be Snips' papa. Yeah, uh, I think the whole fandom agrees on it. Well, we said that about, uh, yeah, we said that about the rainbow haired male, uh, Pegasus uh, from, um, Games ponies play, and then the staff recently said, "Oh no, that wasn't Rainbow's father. Maybe older brother. Probably, but Maybe. come on. Back then, when you show us something like that, we we're going to latch onto it. Like, come on. Yeah, mostly I still view him as her father until I hear otherwise. And you did. Mm-hmm. Well, I've, I now I have heard a and a designer for the show say, "Oh, that's not his father." Well, can you show me a design of her father? Not yet, but. We- then you got squat. <laughs> and meanwhile, speaking of relations, who is this little gray colt with the purple helmet sitting next to Derp- Derpy in her cart? Is he a cousin? A little brother? A son? We, we kind of lost Stinky along the way, so. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, for, I was really hoping that Derpy and Dinky was in the same cart, but for obvious reasons, they didn't want to push that angle for, well, they, they just don't want to make it canon. But still, I don't mind it. We well, can... hey, truth, truth be told, they've kinda, it's strange. The, the little unicorn filly named Pete fans called Dinky looks to be the child of Two background ponies, because they've all been shown together. Who? Yes. Golden Harvest, also known as Carrot Top, Mm -hmm. and a a gray stallion with a violet mane called Brush Script. Hmm. Or is it Written Script? They are together. They've been gathered as a group. I believe they've greeted one another at the train station in various episodes. They are probably the most unofficial family. Hmm. All right. So there you go. When you mention Golden Harvest, in my mind, I'm always shipping her with um, who Golden Harvest works with, Rosla? I'm, well, I'm not sure. I mean, shipping it, background ponies, it always, see, it, it's what you want it to be. I've seen them acting as a family, so I, I'll i say, okay, until I hear otherwise, yeah. they're, a fa- they're a family. But you need to Sorry. show this, Silver. Like, I really want to see... Uh, where you saw that, like, just tell me that episode and can search the wiki for myself. 
uh, in all honesty, probably if you just look at Golden Harvest page, it will list the episodes where she appears next to uh, Brush Script and, and Dinky. All righty then. We'll check it out. But we'll check it out, but that is not this episode because, well, I think one or two of them might be in the background. But we're about to get to a musical number, y'all. Can I sing? <laughs> Nay. Oh. Here he comes, here comes Speed Racer rolling down the street. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that I been... only heard a little bit of the intro of Manga Common's review on this episode where he played the Speed Racer theme. Oh, Actually, that would have been, that would have been awesome. No one wins except for this one kid who likes to go ah oh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but we do still have that scene. Oh, another uh, a friend of mine, um, Will's, he referenced um, Wacky Racers with this one too. Ah, uh, Wacky Racers. You know, this is one of the downsides of Diamond Tiara's re- reformation. Yep. There's no character f- to fulfill the win at any cost mentality. <laughs> Yeah, really. Although, it would have been nice to see, um, you know, Diamond Tiara as, what's his name? Das- uh, Dick Dastardly? Yep, and Muttley. <laughs> e. Yeah, as Reginald would play as Muttley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I say Miss Tiara. I see that. I say Miss Tiara. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But, uh, we have Cheer Lee all decked out with her fan favorite costume to, uh, Set things off. You beep. A- nah. Oh, d- nah, she says. Mm-hmm. I've seen better designs. <laughs> no, this is the first time we've seen this Shirley outfit, besides the Games Ponies Play one. No, what was that? Rainbow Falls episode? I don't know. That one. Either way, I've seen way better cheerleader designs in past media, and even at my own school. <laughs> oh. We have the edgiest of colors, red, black, and white. Okay, look, if you're all going to cheer for Toon Critic. <laughs> but well, considering my past school was... Actually, my school, like, our mascot was the Rough Rider. Because the school was uh, Roosevelt High School. I think you can get the idea on what that was about. <laughs> actually, now all I can think about is uh, Nostalgia Critic's review. Ghost Pony Rider. <laughs> Ghost Pony Rider. Uh... Actually, can we go watch Ghost Rider instead? Oh, you go watch it. That guy's badass. <laughs> uh, uh, if we're, well, if okay. we're sidetracking, have you guys seen the cover's review of the, uh, of the, uh, Dear Arc? Yes, nope. indeed. <laughs> oh, that was good. I don't watch Linkara. Okay. You need to leave. <laughs> no. There are some things that are just insurmountable. Don't let the door hit you with a good door cracked you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Give me his channel and I'll start binge watching. Fine. No, you just watch the pony one. That's enough. Uh, atop the fourth wall dot com. Yes. But anyway, we have our own review to do. No, I'm, I'm apparently plugging Linkara because <laughs> I'm a total fanboy. Okay, same here. Well, we basically we do get into the song. Mm-hmm. Giddy up derby races, which I think is a lot of fun. Yeah, I do like it too. It's got the best visuals. Uh, I always love making use of the checkerboard flag. And uh, just the refrain especially. It, it is catchy. It'll get stuck in mm-hmm. your head. To me, it sounded like something out of Mario Kart. Like the whole tune. Like it has that Mario Kart feel. And yet, I have to wonder about the school budget. Because they were able to build a track around the whole of Ponyville in a, in a three-leaf clover formation. Never once wondering what might happen if all the cars intersected at the same uh, section. Yeah, <laughs> I think this this is one of the problems of generate your own racetrack. <laughs> I was just saying, Cheer Lee, did you make them sign a waiver? Because <laughs> you were gonna get sued. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm trying to look at this track, and how do you even race on it? Very carefully. Very carefully. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. But yeah, they get you a little two up, and so they crash. And that near-death experience is enough to get the Crusaders to scream at their big sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this moment here is the realization that they messed up. Yep. When everything crashes, all we need is a fire in or a burn it all. Burn the evidence. That would be nice. <laughs> it's not that bad. Oh, yes, so- it is. Someone get firebrand on the line. I don't have his contact. Silver, you have to get him yourself. 
Uh, he won't talk to me after that whole baseball incident. And the time you also invade his dream of winning an Emmy or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, there's that. And, and that one time. And, that, and then that other time at BronyCon. Oh, that And that Bronicon. other time at BabsCon. Oof, I, I, I wonder if he's still your friend. <laughs> And then there's Pacific Pony Con. Then there was that. Then there was that letter I sent him. <laughs> that one year at Nightmare Nights. Oh God. Oh, just put put simply, I have a karmic debt with Firebrand that would probably take three lifetimes <laughs> to clear. But especially since he stole the number one spot on WatchPony.com. <laughs> what? what? He st- he sw- he stole it. No, you stole it. <laughs> ah, yeah. I prefer to think I earned it. <laughs> I know you did. You are the best reviewer. How? Hey. But we'll we'll stroke your ego later. How about we get back to this? I can't believe I just said that. Let's get back to this episode. No. Oh my my ego is tempted. But anyway, well, speaking of egos, everyone's deflates a little as the the elder siblings all realize they done mm-hmm. messed up. But this is my little pony. This is the world where consequences usually don't follow you around. Because all they got to do is redesign to have a Phoenix cart, a super fast apple cart, and uh, a nice green and yellow, which, hmm, they're usually not the best colors to go together in my eyes. Unless you're the Green Ranger. That's like a gold shield. And then Cheerly. Cheerly is so much fun in this. I've always enjoyed her slightly sarcastic sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> Cheerly is the everyday pony. She's like... Oh God! Wake up, deal with kids and monster attack. Repeat. Ah, uh, and goes on date with Big Mac. <laughs> I, she she is just she's still nice. That's the important thing. Sarcasm is the lowest form of wit. They say. Uh, of course, they said that about puns <laughs> too, and I don't believe them. Yep. <laughs> but basically, it's more maybe not sarcasm. It's just very dry. This is. Sahara Desert levels of dry humor. Yeah, and I do believe that this is all because of where she lives and her experience with the main six. <laughs> She's like, wait, you shit me with whom? I was only with her that one episode. But anywho, we get a do-over. And everybody's happy because now it's just the kids driving without any uh, co-pilot. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Have kids driving full carts. Or Silver, how about this? Have the kids drive without adult supervision. <laughs> Yeah! Wait, I take it back. This isn't a do-over for the better. This is putting everybody in danger. <laughs> it's a family picture. We all yeah, gotta It could die. be like go-karts and nobody gets hurt. We all gotta die. <laughs> Why do you think we haven't seen the little derpy boy, uh, Colt since this episode? It he was thrown in the hospital? It was tragic. Oh, no. Yeah, I just made this die. Oh, you. <laughs> so die. I'm rolling my R's. <laughs> You're not doing a very good job like you normally do. Well, that's because I'm not using my tongue to roll the R's. <laughs> How you do that, I'll never figure it out. Uh, you just press the tongue to your top of your mouth and try and let the voice vibrate for you. Our lessons aside, let's finish this. I'm a motor vote. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's really not much else to say. I mean, the uh, the three elder sisters are gathering the art of chillaxing, something Starlight Glimmer still mm-hmm. needs to learn. Yeah. And they're just enjoying it while Rainbow still wants to be a little competitive, mm-hmm. a little excited. But maybe that's the big thing missing from this is a sense of competition. There is no – there's no one, one goal, two contenders. And we never see the ending – but I think mm. that's the point of this episode. It's not the, the the message here is not about who wins or loses, but it's about teaching a lesson to everyone involved. Like the viewer here, like including the viewers. Like we know people who do this. We know people who are like this. So this is a nice lesson for them to well learn from, and not knowing the result of the race. Obviously, we're going to assume that the CMC won. That's about it. And learn a valuable experience from this. Well, we'll we can hope. But uh, for now, it's just take it easy. Watch watch unsupervised children race in full-fledged carts and watch those lawsuits pile <laughs> up. Nah, they signed okay. the waiver already, so no lawsuits. 
And that is basically the cart before the ponies. Mm -hmm. So I think we've covered it pretty in depth, but what shall we add in our final thoughts? Sefi. I think you all pretty much know my internal rage ready to blow when it comes to this episode. All my rage. Meh. I don't know. Just, I think I've stated everything throughout this podcast, how much I hate this episode. Mm. Well, I, I, ugh. There are a few elements I did like in this episode, like, you know, the concept of racing in general, and the song, I liked the song, but that's it. That's all I really mm. liked in this episode. I'm sorry. It's okay. I don't know if I can ever mm. forgive you. You didn't like cheerleader. Oh. <gasps> the colors don't match her pony skin. I think it complements her skin. Or oh, coat. No, it doesn't. What would you know, Norman? I rule. All right, as Safi goes in for therapy as she tries to get over her deep abiding <laughs> rage, which I shall exploit in future podcasts. Yep. Oh, <laughs> Uh, Norman, what did you think of this episode? Final thoughts? I like this episode. I enjoy it a lot. I, I won't say that it's the best, but I would say that it's an em- enjoyable watch. The whole setup was predictable. The song was awesome. And the part where I wish that they treated sisters and have more potential storylines going on there was a miss. But what we got here was not bad. And I like it. It's one of those fun episodes where... If it's on, I'll watch it. If it's not, I probably won't go hunting for it. I'm of a similar mindset. Uh, I don't consider this a bad episode, but it's just sort of a fun but forgettable. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot. To, really, the, the highlights are Rarity's history, Derpy's both old cart and new relation, mm-hmm. and uh, maybe just some of the fun visuals. I love the idea of swapping sisters for a day just to see how the dynamics are, are shift to so we can sort of appreciate uh, the, the true sisters. But honestly, I would have enjoyed more if there'd been a sense of competition, if there was a attention to this race. Every, every wacky, wacky racers episode or episodes like Teen Titans that featured a wacky racer style race had a prize for everyone to compete towards. Uh, Kids Next Door had a competition as well, and a threat. Oh, yeah, I remember that episode. Oh, gosh, I remember Kids Next Door. Yeah, was not bad. But all these had more tension. This one seemed a little afraid to keep tension. I mean, there was the, there was the conflict between the sisters, but for the race itself, it's amazing how little it mattered. Oh, that's true. I, I think the reason for that is because there's nobody competing for the ribbons. Like, the CMCs are all aiming for different ribbons. And in the race, we don't see any conflict between, let's just say, Diamond Tiara and uh, probably um, Scootaloo or probably Apple Bloom and so on. So we don't have that tension of, oh, Apple Bloom must win or Diamond Tiara will win the race. Ha ha ha. The only tension is when Rarity blocks everyone with their wings. You're like, Rarity, stop spoiling the fun for everyone. Yeah, that was just like, oh, cheating. Arr. Rawr, 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 rawr. But I think that that sums it up. We've we've had mixed reactions to this episode, but eh, as is true of any fandom, there will be a diversity of opinion. Huzzah! Yay. So next week on the MBS show, we're back to reviewing the comics, and we have at long last reached Friends Forever number thirteen. Oh God! <laughs> Starring Princess Cadence and Princess Twilight oh Sparkle. God. And, and the hissy cat, too. Oh, God. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to be full of rage throughout the next two weeks, aren't I? My goodness. She, I, I think, Safi, so. do you need a hug? Norman. Maybe. Oh. No, no, I don't want a hug from Norman. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Well, no, I don't want to hug you, too. Oh. Fine, oh. I'll take the hug. No. All right, we're... we're... We're going to do some team building exercises in between episodes, see if we can't uh, clear the bad vibes here, y'all. Uh, I blame this episode. I blame my vicarious capacity. <laughs> uh, but anywho, next week is going to be 
Whew, extreme. Oh, we're in the extreme phase. Do it to do. Oh, thank you. Kids gonna have fun. <laughs> well, folks, we will see you for that comic review next week, and we'll see if we can contain our rage. <laughs> yes. So, so for the MBS show, I am Steve McQueen, and I have been Norman Sanzo racing with my car. I got no pun here, so yay. And I'm Sapphire Grump Song. And we're saying, see you next week. See ya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the camera out of my face. Oh, grumpy. Oh, my rage! <laughs> well, this is going to be carrying over. Brooklyn rage! Apparently, dang, I thought I was the only one who was upset about that comic. <laughs> <laughs>